again, their, their mid to late game is actually quite good. To re-illustrate the point, if they're not behind early game, Impulse actually are very good at closing out wins. It's just a matter of getting through their, you know, average 1,500 gold deficit in the early game, which maybe they can do here against TSM. And we'll see if that can happen as we get ourselves into picks and bans. Corky and Gangplank and Callista all off the table. No big surprises here. Uh, yeah. Gangplank, though we are on 6.4, he had received some changes to how he stacks barrels. Uh -huh. He's still roughly a top 10 champion globally in champ select, but he's down to like 70% from like 100% pick ban. Yeah, uh, definitely did get nerfed, but uh, I think it was a pretty well-adjusted yeah. uh, nerf to the champion. So we'll, we'll see how that one plays out the more time uh, teams get on him, but mm -hmm. is going to be barred from playing in this game on the ban list. Varus actually also found himself there. So a lot of yeah. poke bans here, uh, actually from both sides. And the Lulu is the first pick here for TSM. Maybe they will play around uh, double lift here. I'm pretty, see, the thing is, when you see a Lulu pick for TSM, neither of those solo laners really jumps out at you. This could, you know, theoretically still be a support Lulu. Sure. Afro Mu has actually been one of the sports that played more support Lulu um, than most other North American LCS supports. Right. So that could very well be a support pick, but um, my my second guess would be Bjergsen in the mid lane. Yeah, actually. I would think Bjergsen more than Hanser. We've always sort of lauded Hanser for his ability to play many, many different styles. Happy to play tanks, happy to carry. Uh -huh. I could see him picking up Mage without problem Not either. happy to play Pixies. <laughs> I, I think he can totally do it too. I think he can play a Yordle with a purple hat. I think it's fine. Either way though, Impulse getting some nice champions for themselves. Graves is a flex for top and jungle, or mm -hmm. mid if you're keen. Um, the Braum support, I think, just has been the most common support, really, since the last few patches. So mm -hmm. just taking general power picks, honestly. Yeah, um, and they have, if they follow the previous trends, um, there's a couple more, you know, top lane Graves games for them, but Broxen also has time on it, so either of them feel comfortable. And there you go, that's CSM showing their hand. Uh, it is going to be probably mid lane Lulu, um, and they will play around yeah. double lift on the Kog'Maw seen success with him. Lulu plus Kog'Ma is just an insane combination. It's one yeah. of the first things when Kog'Ma got buffed that everyone cautioned against. All across the world were like, oh my god, yeah, Kog'Ma buffs are insane. Yeah. Do not let a team get Lulu plus Kog'Ma. Now, the Kog'Ma nerfs have come into the attack speed, Yeah. but Lulu plus Kog'Ma is still an insane amount of synergy between the two champions because of the extra damage, because of the protection that she allows. Mm -hmm. um, and paired with Alistar, he's also got a nice front line to work with. So TSM are going to go with a strong team fighting team comp here. Yes. However, I do like how Impulse have played champ select. There's two different fronts here that I can really big, both around the 80 carries. Braum is Kog'Maw's best friend and is Sivir's <laughs> worst enemy. And, and so setting up to say, look, you are not allowed to play Braum Cog because you take the Braum away, but then seeing what they actually go for and then still coming back for Sivir. I well, agree with Jat that I think Sivir is like a, a top tier 80 carry to pick. I, and I, I think we all I agree like that Sivir is a top tier pick, but Braum, I mean, Okay, I'll, I'll go with it, but um, I think that the Gragas uh, paired with Sivir also adds a lot of versatility. I think it does. Um, it is going to put a lot of pressure on the skill of the player, though. Mm -hmm. um, Gragas is... why There's a huge variance in Gragas' play, just yeah. because so many of his skills are skill shot based. Um, and if he does get a great explosive cast, you know, you can win the game for your team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Braum also stops half of what Krakus wants to do. Of course, you can you can stop the explosive cask. So mm -hmm. we'll see if Proxy can get some knock-ins onto the double lift Kogma. Uh, of course, it looks like we're going to be likely seeing the Graves in the top lane with the mid lane are going to be maybe Twisted Fate here for Puri. And so every single champion has some way to at least get themselves or the team into the back line. This Kogma can definitely be attacked pretty heavily here as the lineup comes through those fans scaring. On Kindred, yes, there's a Gragas in the enemy team, but you can maybe save someone with the ulti there. And it's yeah. a top lane tank trundle to hold the front line. It's actually pretty funny because me, as just personal experience, I have always hated uh, playing Kindred into Gragas. Right. Uh, just because I'm not a very good Kindred player, for one, but also because, you know, Gragas has so many tools that he can deal with Kindred and Kindred's ultimate, which is another form of safety for double lift here. Right. Um, but again, it comes down to the skill of the Gragas player. And I actually talked to Kire, you know, after he picked the Kindred into Gragas, and he actually likes the matchup. Really? Just because he's so often been able to outplay enemy Gragas players. Um, you just have to save your tumble or uh, your hail of arrows there with Kindred to be able to, you know, reposition accordingly. 
Okay. And you can also save the Kindred Ultimate till after Gragas uses it, if they're using it for initiation, yeah. which in this team comp, it looks like Impulse might use Gragas Ultimate very early on in conjunction with TF trying to stun someone into place for a good right. one. To try to actually pick up the combat so, in the first place. We'll so, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, the order of Skill operations. Matchup. Skill matchup. There you go. Crepo says it for like every matchup in the bot lane, by the way, regardless of whether it is or not. Either way, I think it's going to be a great match here. TSM versus Impulse. Tweet at LOL Esports with hashtag TSM win or hashtag TIP win for which team it's going to be. Solomid, really close between either dropping to fifth or moving up to third. Impulse, of course, their destiny not set in stone either. Tied for seventh. Two and a half games back from six. They could go up, they can go down. We'll see what these guys do. Here we go into the match. All right. We'll also keep our eyes on Spence Garen and see if he does go with the Devour, which has been the overwhelming favorite recently yeah. for Kindred players. Um, also, I want to see if he makes any early moves because JSM actually did a pretty good job at IEM in some of the games of utilizing Spence Garen's you know, early offensive tendencies mm -hmm. on a jungler. Um, but really the interesting story here for this game is the top move here from Impulse as they find Hauntzer. Flash, slow and Hauntzer has to flash away. It'll be a trade of summoner spells. Hauntzer getting away pretty cleanly. Two trinkets used in non-ideal positions, but Impulse will be able to yeah. push right so on this. That's a case of do you want to expend two more flashes for a on Impulse's side to grab that first blood? Maybe, Maybe somebody is there protecting him. Uh, I think that if no one is there protecting him, then you can capitalize, but it's very risky there going in blind. Uh, and they'll take the sure win of flash advantage. Hauntzer mm -hmm. on Trundle will not have an escape. Maybe that, tra maybe that turns into something. We'll see if there's any ramifications later on in the game. If it's a lane swap, you've pretty much got three minutes of guaranteed safety to get that cooldown most of the way back because you really never fight other champion in the 3v0. So we'll see what the arrangement ends up being. And look at this, actually very safe starts on both sides. Sven Skarin mm -hmm. getting a long leash alongside Yellowstar and Doublelift, actually. So they really ensure that Sven Skarin is not stopped. And Yellowstar actually going to stay to leash in the bot lane as well. So I have not seen this level one, actually, mm -hmm. in well, quite some time. Yeah. Uh, TSM, they also, Hanser here, saw the dual lane starting Gromp and is trying to take away the wolf camp. He's he's doing a good job. He's taking the small ones, and he's actually hiding the big wolf around the corner. If, they, if he doesn't chase this further. Proxen, yeah, he doesn't see the wolf there in the fog of war. Hanser, smart move right there, leashing the wolf around the edge, and he's going to be able to steal away a camp. Wow. Very, yes, very um, good. You know, as a top laner, you're happy to get any sort of scraps, and a full camp for yourself is uh, definitely good for Hanser. Things have turned around after having to use his flash early. Very happy yeah. with uh, the start for him. Definitely really smart stuff by TSM to get more of the jungle in the early game that will trickle forward and just give them more golden XP total. Kanina's one. The Trundle will still walk into the bot lane for the standard 3v0 gameplay. And looks like there shouldn't be really any issues with knocking the outer turrets down for both of these teams. Mm -hmm. That means it we next track sort of where the junglers are going yeah. and what they do after the first wave. Impulse down. definitely uh, is going to knock it down first uh, and pushing harder. So we'll see how they transition if they decide to continue hard shoving uh, with the Graves, which is actually happens pretty frequently, trying to shove it all the way down to the secondary turret just because Graves is so good uh, at constantly shoving waves. And it looks like they are going to do that. Okay. That's going to make things interesting because I don't know if TSM can recall their dual lane back in time to absorb the wave under that left side tier 2 turret. And I like this tempo play here from uh, Impulse because they already knew they had the lead on the first turret. Uh, and they're going to get this one all the way into the second. Let's see if they can actually finish getting the second one though because TSM are playing uh, pretty standard here. They're going to try and bounce the wave instead uh, and go back and defend secondary. Secondary is... Uh, pretty hard to take, even if you do have Graves at close range getting that yeah. extra damage on the turret. They may only get it to half. TSM will be able to freeze his bot lane, but Doublelift is low on health and mana, so he will not absorb the experience that is currently being gained on that freeze. This turret's down to half, and honestly, yeah. TSM didn't get much. I feel like more gold was temporarily gained by TIP, and that turret damage just will be useful at some point later in the game. We shall see. Um, I think that... Play, the tempo play was still correct here from Impulse, because uh, as you say, the turret damage whenever you have a Twisted Fate and a Graves, like a Graves in a solo lane like oh, that yeah. is always going to try and shove lane and keep up the pressure, um, especially since their AD carry is Sivir, who has great wave clear, you know, and can control side waves a lot easier than Kog'Maw can early in the game. Um, we shall see. Svenskaren, 
unlucky for him, the scuttle crab that was marked was the opposite from his lane swap strong side. So uh, sadness. I believe Proxen was the one able to kill that first and deny the stack to him. But that is a very small part of the game. Now mm -hmm. the scuttle, the opposite scuttle crab has been marked and. Just unlucky for him. Lane swaps back here as Impulse hide on the pink ward and look to make a risky play here. Committing so many people down bottom. Fang does have teleport, so he can teleport back up. And try and catch the wave okay. when Tantra puts it in, but flash for flash. Trade of flashes, yes. Fenskeren was waiting in the wings. It'd be now it's a three on three with everyone around on this side of the map here. And Tantra has his own teleport. I think Fang's gonna have to blow his teleport yeah, to so get too. on top. And that might open up the play for a counter move from TSM. Teleport advantage here for TSM. Five Plus, minutes. Uh, it's not just a single teleport advantage. Mid lane, until TF hits six, Bjergsen also technically has a global advantage over him. Gato, no flash, remember? A lot of summoners burn for that one. Yeah, Gates in a bad spot. Will get to jump back to his jungler. And now the re-engage comes in. Yellowstar taking a boomerang to the back of the head. Has to kite back. A nice trundle pillar buys some time. He's going to flash for the chop, But it hits Gate, which is not nearly <laughs> enough. I'm not sure why Hansa burned the summoner. Yeah, there's no turret, but the backup has already arrived. TF has shown up. Imperian says, don't you dare kill my teammates. Nothing for nothing. Well, the farm lead for TSM. Well, I mean... It was a lot actually expended there. Sure. Um, Hanser blows everything. Um, teleport and flash there to try and force something to happen, but Chomp very insignificant slow there on it and not, not able to get much, uh, much done with it. So TSM expend uh, the small advantage that they had. Uh, and as you say, not really able to get too much, but hey, Sven got the mark on that Scuttle Crab. Yeah. So that is something. Plus, they're working with a gold lead here. 600 advantage for TSM. Yeah. Honestly, really good stuff. Midland's winning by plus 16. You saw the better jungle start. That has continued to pay forward as Sven Skaren's quite ahead. Yeah, and but Devil's been funneled all the gold. So exactly. Really That's what I was going to point out. Honestly, the biggest thing is that there's a huge gold advantage here on the Kogma, which is the crux of the TSM uh, composition, exactly where they want their money to be even though uh, Hanser now a little bit, uh, a bit of a gold disadvantage, he will be able to claim uh, an extra wave here as the, uh, as Fang did shove up the yeah. turret already. So should be sitting just fine. And I do want to say something about Kog'Maw as a champion right now, as far as played as Marksman Kog'Maw. Uh, this is not like season 2014 or 2015 Kog'Maw. Kog'Maw is a mid game spiking champion. His two item spike is his best power spike and it actually goes down from there. Yeah, so in terms of thinking about the Kog'Maw, it's not that 50 minutes the dream, it's 25 minutes the dream. And the reason for that is in large part due to the fact that Kog'Maw does, can't really confidently buy penetration items later yeah. in the game. And so the tanks really do actually become a problem for him later in the game. Yep. Um, but much later, you know, big game definitely. Yeah, it takes a while to start him. falling off. But that is one thing to keep in mind is that 60 minute game is not actually what the Kog'Maw wants here. Sivir, meanwhile, I think scales just incredibly. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, she will just be able to bounce ricochets on people. They crit and they wreck people. So, uh, late game, I just kind of by default would give it to Impulse, but that is very far away from now. We see Sven Skarin taking away the red buff on the top side of the map as Impulse goes for a dragon here. And mm -hmm. as Solo Mid have just gotten back to equal in gold, Impulse will get the first dragon of the game, and that's going to feel pretty nice. Yes. Uh, during that time as well, TSM have double lift farming at his turret. I want to see how long they keep it here. Because uh, he can actually keep it down bottom for quite a long time. And there's not a lot left on the map for Impulse to take. So I'm very curious as to where Impulse will try and pressure next. Since we talked about them trying to keep up that pressure with the Switzer Bay, with the Graves, um, and constantly pushing. It's all about how can you punish a freeze if, if TSM obviously want to get a bunch of money on Kogma to get to his first item. Yeah. Uh, and they leave him down bottom. Uh, it's up to Team Impulse to try and keep that tempo up. Then Skaren gets another mark for himself. And now we see Devil having to push Skaren. out the bottom lane. The freeze broke, but no one on Impulse is here to punish at all. Like, and there are no wards for Devil. If I can't see any vision at all from the blue side on this side of the map, this, mm. this looks like just him begging for Destiny to show up down there, but it looks like no one's going to punish Doublelift pushing away by himself. Yeah, it's actually that decision was made, you know, for Doublelift. The call, call was made for him to switch uh, priorities from freezing into pushing and spamming all the spells because they have this deep ward up top. TSM saw the three-man commitment from Impulse up top side, and so they wanted to push it out 
uh, even with the threat of the uh, Twisted Fate. Remember, they do have two teleports on TSM side mm -hmm. as well. Here's Impulse. The next bit. Yeah. Yeah, so Impulse with all those uh, resources still on the top side of the map, and of course they're on top of Scuttle right now, are taking Rift Herald, which means Double Lift is mm -hmm. still safe to somehow, and you should not do this in solo queue at nine and a half minutes, solo pushing bot lane the tier two turret. Yeah, remember, these are informed decisions from TSM. Uh, this is not Double Lift blindly. As people, you know, so much like to go back to those tendencies from him sure. from years ago of side lane pushing. Uh, conscious decision made due to the information that TSM game from those wards and from the Scuttle Crab. Uh, we'll see if Impulse can actually capitalize on this Rift Herald because they have actually given it over to Sivir. Can annihilate the waves and then uh, add extra attack speed to the minions, but they aren't going to try and use that to finish off that secondary turret, which we thought might have later game ramifications. Turns out TSM have been able to defend for fairly long um, and haven't taken much more damage on the secondary turret. So hasn't been too much of an issue. Team Impulse, though, remember always that they, even though the gold is tied right now, they have an extra outer turret taken already. So there's more standing gold here that TSM can grab uh, once they decide to make that move. Yeah, so a little bit of ever actually knocked down that top outer because the trio came in in time. So, mm -hmm. so the mid waiting to get that gold uh -oh. when they can. But yeah, Yellow Star face checking to the enemy team, and he's only level four. Gold card hits, he flashes and actually stays alive. Sven Skarin re engages, headbutt, pulverize, makes Pyrian flash away. Nearly dead as well. Gold card locked, but Gates taking tons of punishment. Has to flash away as well as the team just runs away off Mash's ulti. Yeah. In lane swap games like this, you re Oh, double lift! Flash headbutt, there's the pushback. Oh no! Fang's ulti misses would have probably killed off the double if Kog'Maw a yes, really definitely rough would misplay. Have. Uh, yeah. You not much else to say about that, uh, except for the ulti goes wide there from Fang. Ooh. He has had some hiccups with the Graves, even though he does like it. Has played it quite a few times, but yeah. Since Garen also was holding on to the Kindred ultimate, there uh, in that little skirmish where Yellowstar was getting a little bit low. And Bjergsen and Svenskaren actually do not double up on their um, life-saving abilities, as sometimes has happened in the past when they sure. run two of them. Uh, Lulu ultimate did go down fairly early, so he, Sven was able to hold on to his ultimate. And the standing goal that we talked about will be claimed here. Double if gets all the local. Yeah, that's actually the second time in a row it's happened, by the way. When the bot lane turret went down, they also gave all the local gold to double lift as well. Mm -hmm. They've really just been prioritizing it. He gets the farm, he's the important one. Hanser, deal with scraps. Deal with it, homie, because it's all about the double lift show right now. Yeah. The one thing, I do have a question for you as an AD carry yeah. main. Um, to me, the Boots of Swiftness early on Kogma really stands out as a, a question mark because yeah. Kogma, we always talk about Kogma likes to stand still for most of the time when you pop the W and won't be moving that much. Plus, cooldown reduction is great for getting more W activations off. But yeah. How do you feel about the early Boots of Swiftness? Um, I don't super love Swifties. I get it in terms of like being able to chase people. Mm. It, they're cheap. Uh, more uh, of an offensive. Yeah, like I would just, personally, I just buy Berserker's Greaves. But I think what happened is Double have backed on like exactly 800 gold. And so he couldn't buy his Blasting Wand. Was is my guess on what actually happened there in terms of itemization? Because he had to take kind of an awkward recall at a random point. Mm -hmm. um, as far as actually buying cooldown boots, the thing is the W cooldown doesn't start ticking till after W ends. So you have like six or seven seconds on, then you have a four seven seconds off, which then you know gets shrunk by up to three seconds based on CDR. So yeah. you actually get less sort of returns than you might expect from cooldown reduction as an itemization choice on Cogma. Let's look at uh, how they position him now with Rage Blade completed. Because we can all agree that. Yeah, that is, is the first item for Kogma. Number one best item in game. Yep. And he's got it ready. And it's part of the reason he's no good at 60 minutes. If you don't sell that item, the, the, the stats just stop mattering that late into the game. Nice blue buff steal goes over to Svenskir and actually the Kogma teammate of his. And now the push on down, a nice oh, knockback, and Sven Skarin does not get the ulti! The chain stun lands, and that means first blood for Team Impulse. Yellowstar has nowhere to go, and to the slaughterhouse he goes. Mash gets the kill, 2-0 Impulse. Not quite in the lead here off some turret deaths, but certainly holding up in the early game. Yeah, very good collapse there by Impulse to punish that attempt at a blue steal from TSM. Uh, I guess technically they did steal the blue away, but not for long. I think double had it though. 
so I think he's still wearing it, but it's still, of course, way better for Impulse. Either way, they go right away for Dragon number two. Yeah, there's Double wearing the blue buff, so I guess he's still wearing it. But be careful, because this is a not Time good team fight as TF comes in. <laughs> Gates real low, though, and just dies. <laughs> Double lift is getting to free hit. Finally goes down to mash. The team flies oh, forward, looks for oh, Hauntz or a few more kills traded. I believe that's a two for two, but it still means that Dragon Control is here for Impulse. But yeah, they will back away that for now. got a little hairy for Impulse. TSM actually pretty happy with how they were able to stop that and go even on the kills. Double lift uh, didn't have to use any summoners, by the way. He still has heal up. Mm -hmm. So even though he did go down, it wasn't too big of an issue for them. Yeah. You are going to want to save those high impact summoners for the team fight that will mean objectives afterwards. Absolutely. Spencer Hansen has been doing a good job, by the way, mm -hmm. um, keeping up his farm on this Kindred, even though he did die there you know, with the blue invade. He's putting out... All right, so let's take another look at this. Got the three-man ultimate, you know, jumped forward with this unbreakable, but unbreakable is down, and now he is breakable. Double lift <laughs> gets the ultimate off, and it's Bang's gonna have to, yeah, it's broken. Proxen here, could he have walked up that wall instead of down? I don't know, we're fighting again. We're fighting again, the Yellow Star's already dead. He's still not level six, by the way. So he is not durable in the slightest. Fence Garen pops the ulti on himself, but the team already disengaged. That said, the Devil does pick up one kill. Gates able to walk away with a jump to a teammate. Mid laner for support. Honestly, TSM worked harder for it, though, and mm -hmm. advantage to them. Be able to take down a Pyrian, and Pyrian on the Twisted Fate is the main wave clear at this stage. See if Gragas can pick up the slack. Not really enough. Not exactly. Only a few minions, but this is still a lot of turret damage available. New wave shows up. This will be mid lane tier two going down, and TSM suddenly four turrets to two up after getting some great mid lane push. Yeah, you know I say that he's the main wave clear, but they also have Sivir as their AD carries. So yeah. Mash going top lane right there. Um, still not quite sure if Gragas plus Sivir is able to wave clear. Uh, I think they might have been depends able if you're to... under threat or not. Because I mean they didn't have to save it for too long. I feel like Boomerang and. Uh, a couple of ricochets would be yeah. enough to hold on to it, but they don't commit the Sivir as well, and TSM get that mid lane turret. Again, another Rift Herald here. Last time, all they really got out of it was the team gold. Didn't really make much use of the buff with MASH uh, taking it last time. This time, Proxen will get it, so at least they'll increase his uh, jungle clear. All right, let's look at the, how this started. What Eight. a pillar. Oof. Yellow Star with flash. the flash plays. Oh, he missed the pull for us, though. The uh, gate got actually knocked out. Really, the uh, burst there from Fang. This time, easy to hit in that corridor. Double lift comes to save the day for TSM here. And Sven Skarin gets his ultimate off wow. on himself. So double lift's cutting there was way more impressive than it looked because everyone's stacked on top of each other. He, I believe he actually moved between attacks and then still managed to click on Pyrian each time. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that was like right click ASK. So that is actually really hard to have the mouse accuracy to do that. That is actually impressive what Double Shift did there. Definitely did, because uh, Sivir was right next to him sometimes. Yeah. If, especially if you're trying to quickly cancel your move on a Kog'Maw. Mm -hmm. Might get a misclick in there, but not for Double Lift. Do. Definitely always been a mechanical great as far as AD carries are concerned. And right now with TSM, mechanics are kind of all he needs, playing the Kog'Maw. He's gonna get into the mid game as fast as he can. He did take a pit stop for Quicksilver Sash, which delays Hurricane, which actually he would just literally just have right now if he didn't buy Quicksilver Sash. Uh, so damage is down, but it will help him get away from Twisted Fate ganks. And we'll yep. see if that durability is enough for Double Lift here as he puts down what damage he can. Mash has Essence Reaper done now, plus the Zeal. Once he gets Static Shiv, he'll really have some great AoE damage to deal in team fights. Yeah, the, the buff to Sivir really starts coming. Uh now towards the mid and late game. Crit starting to come in for Sivir. The team fight damage that she puts out is insane. We'll see if uh, Impulse though, if they can rush to the Kog'Ma. They've got the Sivir, Twisted Fate, and it's gonna, once again, come from a high skill Gragas explosive cask. See if Proxen is up to the challenge. Otherwise, you know, Kindred plus Lulu plus Alistar and Trundle a lot of protection there. Here, here goes the initiation, though. Red card locked, though. TSM knows all about that. Bjergsen's going to be totally <laughs> fine. No gank going to happen for... <laughs>
Yes. I the salute to Reggie that. there from Proxen, <laughs> or period. Excuse yeah, me. no, it's fine. But still, yeah, mid lane under a bit of pressure. TIP can't quite push it all the way down. And keep in mind, that top lane, tier two, got hit down to half HP as part of the initial lane swap game. And Impulse have not yet been able to get back to that side of the map. Oh, yeah. They are TSM right back up the mid lane. Not only are Impulse out of position, but they're down in gold value as well. Even if they find the fight, it's going to be hard for them to uh, pull out a victory, considering they're going to have to scramble for positioning here. Another tur uh, turret here All over right. to TSM. Fang going to try and I think this is a good finally finish the job they started early on. And with how few, how little time he actually has to do this with the rest of the recalls coming in, he would not have killed himself the lane stop going the way it did. So the actual choice is made in minute three of the game actually pays off as a turret kill here. So really do I see the turrets actually die because of that? Like the team just ends up losing the game before that happens. But yeah. we finally saw that the choice to push paying off their impulse, keeping the gold pretty close. Yeah, kind of a drop in the bucket though, because TSM, you know, even though their gold lead isn't, you know, huge at 20 minutes. Sure. They've got so much of it concentrated on Kogma, and it's all about the items. Gold doesn't really win you games. It's the items that you buy with those, obviously. And Double Lift has what he needs right now. Not only does he have the two item huge power spike, but he's got a QSS as well. QSS pop the ulti can't get him away. It actually pushes him out of the team fight. Yellowstar pops ulti, so does the Kindred. So Svenskar is going to sit here, get the heal. TSM staying alive. Ulti's popped. Hanser pops his own. Takes a tribute from his uh, enemies, getting some health and stats for that one. But a zero for zero, ulti's burned for most people. Yeah, Lulu ultimate's still available, though. So they still have some means to protect Cog, And they're yeah. going to keep up the pressure here. Hanser goes right back to split pushing. Both teleports, remember, still up for TSM, whereas Fang just used his on Graves. Yeah, so teleport's going to be oh. an important thing. However, there's still a global up for Piri, and so he can maybe make some split-pushing shenanigans happen here as Doublelift retreats alongside the team over towards his Baron that, as of a minute and a half ago, has spawned on the map. And, of course, Kog'Maw, yeah, real good at killing that thing. Yeah, Svenskaren uh, about there. Uh oh Looking for the play. Flash to the gold card into the good by Svenskaren. Stay that a bit too far. Another flash in for Gate. He looks for the chase in the Doublelift. He was able to flash away to safety. Gold card to a minion, nothing else to hit. And hey, look at that, a nice pick for TIP. Now down to the bot side, Hauser does have flash for himself as well as the cooldowns pretty shortly. Oh, but a great knockback. Flash of the wall, goodbye, killed anyway. That was a great explosive cask by Proxen. And that steady advantage is happening now. Yeah, mid game here, TSM kind of lost focus. Uh, they scramble to a couple different positions. Uh, not quite sh uh, sure where the top lane was right there, but one person gets picked off. Uh, Impulse are grouped as five, able to chain that into a second kill and objective afterwards. So TSM with the mid game sort of loss of focus right there, do give something back to Impulse who are clawing their way back into this one. But TSM never say die. They know teleports up, so when he respawns in four seconds, uh -huh. he's there to join the team. And they lost two people and pushed top lane two two. Turret's almost gone. There's the ultis in. Gold card locked onto Yellow Star. And here comes Hanser. The fight continues. Head up pulverize onto gate, which means he's gonna be dropping rapidly. And Devil gets another kill. The fourth of the game for TSM. Hanser stunned up, but he is tanking the front line. He procs the next target. And look at the damage out of Svenskaren pushing him around. Fang is next up. He will drop down. A shutdown comes through to the TSM jungler, a two for zero this time for the blue team. Revenge for Sven there, and that is when TSM decides to finally blow uh, all the uh, extra summoners that they had stored up. Teleport for Hanser comes in, gonna turn into a Baron for themselves. I don't see Impulse stealing this one. I don't either, Kobe. This one's gonna be going over the TSM, popping the gold lead up to about 4,000 now as TSM are in control of this game. Yellowstar finally at level six. He was able to pop the ulti and tank some damage for a while. And it was all the time they needed for Double Lift to kill basically everyone mm -hmm. and Sven Skaren to steal the deal. Yeah, that sort of extra commitment of Impulse in their own jungle onto Hanser. Yeah. Uh, they actually overextended quite a bit onto the Trundle, which, you know, popped the ultimate there and he gets extremely tanky. Let's take another look at this. They initiated onto Yellow Stars here, and they actually popped the stun right after Yellow Star pops his ultimate. So th at this point, you know, Gate is pretty much forfeit. Gate's pretty dead. But Impulse, look at Pyrian's mana as well. The Twisted Fate is not going to offer much, but they use so much on Haunter, barely a scratch. Allows yeah. Svenskaren to go so deep offensively here. B 
because so much was just used as far as the basic uh, ability cooldowns onto Hanser, yep. the Kindred right into your face there, and they're able to pick up two. Yeah. Over aggression by Impulse. They're going to take the one for zero off the teleport and gotten out, but yeah. getting into a team fight against mid game Kogma, they got punished. Mash, I don't agree. Going Phantom Dancer second on Sivir. It's better for dueling, but who cares? You need Sivir's to aim with the team. Yeah, she's not for dueling. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I don't like this item at all on her in almost any context, but it's going to allow TSM to keep pushing forward. The wall comes up from gate to block some damage. We'll do so pretty cleanly. Minions, though, still tanking up the turret. And look at the damage coming out from double of tier on Kogma. Down to half HP on the top inhibitor turret, and TSM are not going anywhere. They've got Baron buff. They can take their time with this one. Next wave comes in about 20 seconds here. Oh, Fangs, uh, Sterix has popped as well. That's actually oh, wow. very big for Graves. That is Takes away down. not only the survivability, but a lot of damage there as well. That he'll count on trying to life steal when low. Oh, up in goes Gate, blocks the damage, Cyrilty pop, they go for the engage, knockup comes through. Who can they hit? Can to keep the team alive, but that means also time for Gate in the front lines. Who's gonna go down? That will be Gate trading lives with the jungler of TSM, a one for one hero. Barrow to the back line. Honestly, not the worst thing ever for Impulse, going one for one with that. Minions are gone anyway, no push left for TSM. Yeah, they still have Baron, but they've used all of the ultimates here. Baron and buff is going to be enough, though. Croxton has no health, and Fang doesn't either. Chased down by Double Lift on a killing spree. Re-engage, trades back, but oh! <laughs> a triple kill already for Kogma. Period. last man alive, down a half HP. What a good fight for TSM. This inhibitor is gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we did get to see the Boots of Swiftness in action there. You yeah. know, you get a percentage increase from Lulu as far as the move speed goes. Works extra well with the flat and you go move speed fast. from Spoo uh, Boots of Swiftness, but he just runs quicker into a trade there. They did sacrifice him for the inhibitor kill, though. So they make that Baron buff turn into the inhibitor kill, and yep. that was the final goal there for TSM. Uh, a little bit, a uh, few extra deaths there given away during it, but goal accomplished for them. They're very yeah. happy with how that push turned out, and now they're sitting with a fairly comfortable hold on this game. Yeah, gotta say, just pleased with how TSM played minutes 18 to 26. That, okay, Kogma's online. Look to fight over almost anything because he will carry any team fight with the items this champion has. They got a Baron, they got an inhibitor, they got a whole bunch of team fight wins. Yep, good stuff for TSM. Yep, just run straight at Fang. Turret is on him. Mash does get a crit here. Pyrian, again, red card, but uh, Proxen actually got the body slam off at the same time, so gold or red would not have mattered. And they actually got two kills for that as well, since uh, Proxen had to sacrifice his body. Mm -hmm. Solid stuff. It's a 5,000 gold lead now. TSM can feel quite comfortable in this game. There's a Mercurial Scimitar and the makings of a Blade of the Ruin King coming in now for Kogma. Mm -hmm. Nice items for Bjergsen as well. Rush Frost Queens for some pick potential. Again, to try to make that mid game really push in. And yeah, so far, just great things here. The other thing is that Kogma is not really going to fall off in this game because there's nobody building full tank and they've got a trundle to steal tank stats anyway. Yeah. Doesn't need any penetration items. Double up can just destroy anything in front of him. <laughs> Even Braum with Unbreakable up takes half his life. And starting to shatter a little bit down there. Another. A couple of AOE spells come down, and here comes the W one more time. Double doing plenty of damage, taking the turret, but you know what? He's got shields in from the Lulu. Not a big problem there. Gate has to heal back up, but all is well. Yeah. Really frozen heart from Hanser. There's, what, three attack speed users on TIP, all getting really kind of neutered by the item by TSM it, on a lot of fronts, I think, playing this game very smart. Yeah, I think it's going to be fairly simple for them to continue the siege and close it out. Impulse are really hoping for a big, big misplay here from TSM. And again, the Miracle Gragas explosive cast. Well, the Miracle Gragas is what they're going to need here. But right now, bot lane inhibitor turret might be going down on this wave. Hanser wears a shield, walks up, tanks the turret, and says, guys, yeah. this is the time we knock it down. There's a W for double lift, and down goes that turret. The eighth of the game for TSM. Fantasy points getting earned. With every one of those, and here comes the re-engage. Sivir pops the ulti. Explosive cast knocks back Sven Skaren. Knocked into the air, but no one's hitting him. And he's going to survive as double if wreaks havoc in the back line. A two for a zero. Sven Skaren can still save someone if he wants to. And the team is retreating. Impulse have no legs to stand on. They're getting knocked over with all these attacks out of the bio arcane barrage from double if's Kogma. Now on to Nexus turret number one. That's going to drop in a couple of seconds. Now on the number two as Superman is inside the base. This could be the win for TSM. There's really not a lot of defense left. 
five versus three inside of it. Ulti pop by Kidder just to make sure it all goes conveniently. And in goes the Gragas. Turns into a couple of pieces of gold and down goes the Nexus. There's the win for TSM. They didn't expect much anything different after this champ select. But a well-played mid game. And yeah. they're now right on the heels of their opponent, sitting at nine wins right behind both CLG and C9. I really like how TSM just played with a lot of clarity there. They were very focused on their Kog'Maw comp. They drafted the Lulu early. Once they had uh, the comp set, they also played to it really well with Double Lift getting all this local gold on turrets plus minion waves. Mm -hmm. So whenever they did get the choice of where to funnel money, the choice was always to Double Lift uh, on that Kog'Maw just to rush him to that mid game. Yep. Definitely paid off for them. And as far as talking about where these teams are standing, TSM sitting now on nine wins. Uh, I don't... Uh, Echo Fox could catch them theoretically if Echo Fox goes four and zero. If Echo Fox loses this next game, though, TSM would lock into playoffs. They would guarantee top six with three to four games to play left for everyone else. Impulse actually still could make it, I Team, suppose. I They're like sitting on fire. But it's, it's getting tough. Echo Fox plays next up against Team Dignitas. If Dignitas wins, that's another person or another team tying at five wins. If Echo Fox wins, that puts TIP down to alone at eighth. And again, this is a team that could have gone up to playoffs, could have gone down to relegation. We still don't know what Impulse will do in the next three games. But as far as recovering from a, a top four to IAM, not too bad, one game behind second place, TSM can still be that TSM of old that's won three championships here in North America. They've yeah. won at least one every year. And at the start of 2016, if they shape up enough, maybe they do it again. Yeah, it has been a bit of a rocky start this year, but they've kept on uh, putting in the work here. And this game definitely showed um, they cleaned up a lot of those yeah. little mistakes that we had been seeing. Yeah, absolutely. Still, still, of course, there were some issues getting behind early in kills against Impulse, overstepping not respecting Twisted Fate, not respecting TPs, not respecting some of the flanks out there. There were definite holes from TSM, but the macro focus was good. Good game plan. But, yeah, good game plan. Play around the mid-game Kog'Ma, and they took everything off that eight-minute stint. So that was pretty good from them. TSM with a well-earned win. And now for the lowdown on that game, let's check in with Rave, who's standing by with TSM's AD Carry. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. I am joined by Double Lift of TSM after their victory, and a huge victory after that, coming off of IEM. Actually, first off, you came up here and you said, oh, what a game. I want to know what that is first before I get my follow-up question. <laughs> uh, well, we were throwing a little bit in the mid-game. Um, with our team comp, it's pretty obvious. We just needed to get to like one core item on everyone before we start team fighting, and then everyone just constantly got caught, and that was just like slowed down the game, I guess. I think the game should have been, uh, we, we actually had a bet going with our coach, like 26 minutes and under and he'll spike his hair. <laughs> and we couldn't do it. It was 29 minutes, I'm so sad. So I kind of want to know what was the, uh, the communication to kind of pull that back, pull everything back into order when you guys were kind of failing a little bit? Um, well, every time anyone got caught, it was just like, oh God, why did I do that? And then uh, we were playing you know, 45 or 35 for most of the game, so it was just like kind of catch waves. I think TIP's like, uh, macro was really bad. They end up falling super far behind in their lanes because they don't know how to manage creep waves. No. So like in the TV one, for example, um, I didn't even like necessarily like, play better than MASH. I just was ahead 30 CS because he was right, wrong place, wrong time. And after that, it's like super hard to, to recover. You know, like If you're 30 CS down on your top and AD, it means that for two thirds of the game, or for like right. two thirds of the map, you can't make plays. So they're pretty desperate to get initiations and they pull those off really well. So I think they're, um, when they look for picks, they're really strong. They actually can initiate fights uh, unexpectedly. So just avoid those and you'll be all right. I gotta kind of move on to IEM. You guys had about eight games, which is almost half of a split in a matter of a weekend. How did TSM prepare for that? Cause it's definitely a grueling process. Oh, it's super fun. Um, I'm super <laughs> happy we got to go to IAM. I think we improved a lot. And maybe this game didn't really show it, but um, I think we're a totally different team, actually. And everyone on the team knows their role. Um, everything's been going really well. Like, practice is really hard. After the, for example, like, we're all kind of sick right now. And, like, after uh, practice, everyone's really exhausted. Right. And I think it's a really good thing because, um, I, don't, I don't know, it's just, it's a totally different environment. There's, it's a lot of tension. Mm -hmm. And... It's hard, dude. It's super so, hard. It's sometimes it's hard, to, it's hard to stop you. Sometimes it's hard to explain those little things that make the team click really well. Yeah, exactly. But I think we finally found it, and we should be first place at playoffs. 
First place of playoffs, that was actually my next question, so I'll flop it over. Coming out of IEM, what did you think, final question, kind of about the regional play, and how do you expect kind of the regions moving forward? Oh, wow. Um, playing against the European and Chinese teams was actually not really an issue at all. I know, I know that Origin and Fnatic aren't, like, at the top of the standings, but um, the whole, like, EU is greater than anything was like, oh, God, what if they're super good? <laughs> they're actually pretty strong, but not amazing. And But playing against SKT... It's like playing against a brick wall. Like, you just can't do anything. You just, like, throw stuff at them. You make, like, a couple plays, and then it just, it just bounces back. So that's kind of, um, it's really motivating, actually. I really, it was humbling, and it was really fun, and I'm super glad we got that experience, and I think it totally, like, recharged our team. Awesome. Double it. Thanks for going to MDEPF on a few of these questions. Appreciate it. Congrats on the win. We're going to throw over to the analyst desk to break down some more of that game. Thank you very much, Riv. Before we delve into our analysis, we've got another tweet to, hi uh, to highlight regarding the contested picks in 6.4. This one coming from Mid Nightingale 8, who writes, Gragas will still be the most contested, but a new champion we might see more of will be Jin Sivir. Well, that's two champions. So first of all, you cheated. <laughs> yeah. Um, and no, second, Dramatic Jin control. Sivir, though, we've seen Jin on the ban, uh, on the ban list in uh, a number of games already, and Sivir been picked up a few times. Thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, we mentioned uh, at the start of the day when we were casting, we think Sivir's critting on the W is kind of crazy. It's mm -hmm. a spell that was kind of balanced around not critting. Now, suddenly it can crit. <laughs> so late game, the team fight potential is absolutely massive, but we haven't really seen the Sivir in big late game team fights as of yet. I still think it's super strong. Yeah, and there's been a problem with actually engaging fights with the current meta. So people are like, oh, we need to pick these top lane tanks. And now Sivir can enable a lot of those champions to get in and actually perform. Yeah. So. Now, unfortunately, Sivir has lost both games played today. Um, but, you know, with time. <laughs> Just isn't critting in the right places, there right, Jad? There That's what go. it is. Yeah. We've got to turn the crits up. <laughs> <laughs> crits got to be up. Yeah. All right. Anyway, diving into that game, uh, I would say that if you looked at today's, uh, you know, roster of games, this one kind of played out very similarly to the, how you would have expected going in. You have the expectation that TSM should be able to beat Team Impulse just based on where they are in the standings, and that they should have a, a relative amount of cleanliness to the way that they come away with the victory. Mm -hmm. But I do want to start in Champion Select because we see the Lulu and Kog'Ma come out, and Kobe had mentioned that, you know, Kog'Ma itself isn't necessarily this terrifying champion anymore, but to give over the Lulu and the Kog'Ma with it, it becomes far more terrifying. I actually think there's another element here as well on top of those because we're talking about how Kog'Maw, his sweet spot is those two item spikes and then he really sucks at killing tanks. Mm -hmm. But Trundle helps you out in the late game. Trundle shreds a tank and you can actually just burst through an entire team as Kog'Maw. Hmm. So Trundle allows Kog'Maw to have a much more relevance in the game later on too. So I think that's a nice little element there that TSM added. Yeah, overall, solid draft. That's a very good point. Double F had mentioned in the interview that for them, it was really about just reaching one to two core items per mm -hmm. champion. So the fact that they all did synergize in that fashion, then to play it out. Now, he did call out that they misplayed a little bit, probably could have yeah. ended the game sooner. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'll come to you, Jat. You know, the problems that have been plaguing TSM is that it isn't the most clean. It yeah. isn't, you know, uh, hook, line, and sinker every time. Yeah, even at IEM, we saw a lot of problems with, like, Double and Yellowstar not necessarily being on the same page and to be fair to team impulse they had a lot of initiation and pick tools in which to catch tsm off guard but like double lift even said i think he encapsulated the game pretty well uh, the macro play from team impulse was poor and that has actually been contrary to a popular belief where tsm has been strong like their macro play is good mm -hmm. but they've been making small miscommunications to the right overall plan right and that was kind of what we saw again on display here I want to go uh, one one peg deeper into the team impulse point on macro play and just kind of you know maybe pinpoint one or two places in which they could have improved, starting with the fact that they did get two early turrets by having that double mm -hmm. ADC pressure in the lane swap, so two to one. However, they kind of put their foot on the or took their foot rather off the gas when they decided to go for a dragon three person dragon fight then to a three person rift herald take meaning that TSM was afforded so much opportunity in the side lane to just pick up yeah. CS yeah suddenly that, double lift is up 40 CS so, whoa i mean exactly yeah. i mean yeah. that's one of those things where it's like you, what is the value of starting the dragon timer, that five dragon timer, which could be a win condition for this mm -hmm. team versus just picking up the gold and opening the map up more so that they have the gold lead to make those picks that you're talking about, Jet? 
It's kind of yeah. a mid-game team for TIP, so picking up a dragon really isn't worth that much for them. Like, the first dragon, 6% does almost nothing for you early on, and mm -hmm. the Rift Herald, I mean, you can pretty much two-man that with the support as well, so mm -hmm. your AD carry can continue to get farm. So when Kog'Maw gets slightly ahead, a lot ahead, <laughs> then it, <laughs> Very way ahead. closer to those items spikes early on and just becomes a big problem for the team. So TIP, their macro play was definitely... They were making choices, they were just the wrong ones. So they weren't just sitting around doing nothing. They were making choices and giving stuff up, but it wasn't the right trades. All right, still plenty of areas to improve for both of these teams. We have one more game coming up for your viewing pleasure. So stick around for Echo Fox versus Team Dignitas coming up right after the break. Don't go anywhere. Best game of the day. Do you remember Pickle's first LCS match with no runes? A classic. I don't remember. Classic. I was classic playing in a thing. superior region at that time. <laughs> but be careful, because this is a not that good team fight as TF comes in. <laughs> Gates real low, though, and just dies. <laughs> Doublelift is getting to free him. No, we're fighting again. We're fighting again. Yellow Star is already dead. He's still not level six, by the way. So he is not durable in the slightest fence. Garen pops the ulti on himself, but the team already disengaged. Baron and buff is going to be enough, though. Croxton has no health, and Fang doesn't either. Chase down by Doublelift on a killing spree. Re-engage, trades back, but oh! Five. I'm going to count my W. Four, Dang three. Racing. I'm counting, counting, counting. I'm on Gragas. Dennis? Can you hold me? I'm playing on Kog. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm on Drum. And in goes the Gragas. Turns into a couple of pieces of gold, and down goes the Nexus. There's the win for TSM.